In 2015, Sunderland recorded a revenue of £101 million. To put that figure into context, it was the 15th largest in the league, behind teams like Swansea and Leicester, but ahead of Stoke, West Brom, Hull, QPR and Burnley. Their revenue breaks down into £11 million in match day income, £21.2 million in commercial and £69.1 million in broadcasting. For a club in Sunderland's position, it's not unusual for a large portion of their revenue to come from broadcasting income, but it is an important factor. The worry for Sunderland is the club's lack of growth. Since Ellis Shaw acquired a majority stake in the club in 2008, revenue has grown by £37 million, £33 million of which has come directly from the increasing television deals. This means that without the TV money, the club have only grown their revenue by £4 million in seven seasons. For context, in just two years between 2013 and 2015, Crystal Palace managed to grow non-broadcasting revenue by over £12 million. Sunderland have failed drastically in this area, although not as bad as Newcastle, whose non-broadcasting revenue has actually dropped since Mike Ashley bought the club. This is reflected in Sunderland's profits, or lack thereof. The club have made a loss of £25 million in 2015, a year in which most Premier League clubs made a profit. In fact, Sunderland haven't made an annual profit since 2006, with their total losses throughout this period amounting to around £170 million. This loss has largely been financed by Short, who has loaned the club £160 million during his tenure, interest-free, £100 million of which he eventually wrote off. This is one of the reasons that the club's gross debt stands at over £140 million. Sunderland owe money to both Short and to a private banking company. This came with a £6 million annual interest payment, the third highest figure in the league, only behind Manchester United and Arsenal. So why has this happened? There are two clear reasons. Firstly, they buy a lot of players, often with a poor resale value. Between 2008 and 2015, Sunderland spent £253 million on players, with a net spend of £129 million. This means that the club have made half as much money selling players as they did buying players in that period. This is reflected in their low player sales figures, an example of which is the £4 million that the club made on sales in 2015. This figure is higher than some other clubs, but many of those clubs aren't making losses every season. As a result of their player purchases, Sunderland have a 76% wages to turnover ratio. This means that 76% of all the money they make in a year is spent on player wages. A healthy ratio is deemed to be around 50%. Their wage bill in 2015 was £77 million, the ninth highest in the league. That is concerning given their lack of positive results on the field. The second reason is their high turnover of managers. Since Short took over in 2008, Sunderland have had 11 different managers, likely soon to be 12 unless David Moyes can steady the ship. These two factors together create something of a vicious circle. Sunderland struggle in the league, so they bring in a new manager. The new manager naturally wants to buy a few of his own players, so the club spends some money in the transfer market. They survive the drop, but they continue to struggle the following season, and with a £77 million wage bill and a huge reliance on the broadcasting money of the Premier League, the thought of relegation panics the owners into replacing the manager with a new manager, who naturally wants to buy a few of his own players, so the club spend more money and the cycle continues. Throw in an uncanny consistency for poor player purchases and a few poor managerial choices, and the vicious circle eventually starts to look like Dante's Inferno. Ellis Short remains publicly committed to the club, but that could just be because a relegation-threatened Premier League team isn't that easy to offload. Just ask Randy Lerner. Clearly, this model is not sustainable, with the club edging closer and closer to relegation every season. And with the growing financial divide between the Premier League and the Championship, relegation could be disastrous for Sunderland.